Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's always a nice time having you guys around every time I'm here. Yeah, so we'll be talking about national income accounting today. We've, we've discussed national income accounting before, but you know, as I want to do, whenever I find an interesting question on a particular concept, uh, I usually, you know, enjoy it, okay? I did and I would like to like pass that across. Like I said earlier, we've been creating national income accounting since. Um, this is 2021. So the last video that we did on national income accounting was in 2020, I think. Yeah, and this is July. All right, this is July 2021. Okay, so we'll be talking about calculating the actual topic is um, calculating GDP by income and expenditure approach. Now, what is national income accounting? It's just telling us um, the recordings of the income generated by every factor of production that a country owns and when we are talking about that we are talking about the people that the country own that is the workers in the country not the workers of the country now the citizens in the country so whatever income that they generate from whatever they are doing and then we are talking about rent from factors of production that um, households have in a domestic economy we are talking about several other things you know individuals that own firms in the country outside the country okay i believe you get that so the profits that the, these companies make as long as they are f of um, the citizens of a particular country it is included in the national income of that country so if i as a nigerian well, let, let me say in canada for example and then i earn a certain income in a particular year that is going to be included in my country's um, national income which is nigeria's uh, national income for that uh, particular year now, uh, before we get to that, uh, the first thing that we have to do is calculate GDP by income and expenditure approach. Now, there are actually three methods of calculating GDP. We are just to brush through them. Uh, the value added approach that I just talking about, uh, the, the amount of value added to a product as it passes through uh, the stages of production. So, from being a raw material to a, a semi processed good to a processed good, and so on and so forth. And then we have the income approach, which is talking about every income earned by the factors of production that the country owns okay, whether in that country or outside the country and then there is also gdp calculation via expenditure approach so calculating gdp via expenditure approach is just talking about um, summing up the total spending on the currently produced final goods and services okay currently there are these goods that are produced in a certain year and those goods have to be final all right that they don't have to be intermediate goods yeah, so final goods and so I believe you understand what intermediate goods are. These are the final goods of some industries or, or some firms and, and happen to be inputs for some other firms. So you don't need to include the value of uh, those ones. Anyway, when we have a question like this that is asking us to calculate the GDP, we are, okay, we have, we have these items, net investment, depreciation, exports, import, government purchases, um, consumption, net taxes on production. Uh, employee compensation, corporate profits, rental income, net interest, proprietor's income, factor income from abroad. Okay, then we have to find GDP at market price with the expenditure approach. And second question says we find GDP at market price as well with the income approach. Then third is we should find the TNP and the NNP, that's the gross national product and the net national product. And the last is given a statistical discrepancy of 10 billion naira find the national income so this is not a uh, big uh, problem now what what is a uh, net investment net investment is just talking about the actual capital stock in a uh, country okay given the investment in new capital stock and uh, allowing for depreciation of old capital stock now the net investment and depreciation is just talking about the wear and tear of um, capital stock export is exports uh, imports what you are bringing to a country government purchases what the government is buying Consumption words. Consumption is like it's more or less um private uh, domestic consumption. Oh yeah. So consumption is the net taxes on that's an indirect tax. All right. Then employee compensation. What you pay to employees. What employees get because they are working. Okay, which include their wages, their salaries, their social, their um wages, salaries, the social security benefits that their um firms. Uh, paying like keeping into an account for them all of these benefits basically because people are working so if they're not working you don't get an employee compensation mm -hmm. then corporate profits which is talking about the income of corporations incorporated firms uh, rental income income of individuals that own factors of production basically income of households because it is assumed in economics that households are the owners of uh, factors of production and uh, net interest 
the net interest um, briefly is uh, divided into three. So net interest could be by could be paid by. Um, it's just talking about interest paid, interest received. This difference between okay, let me say different difference between interest uh, received and interest paid. So if a firm is lending out its money to another firm, okay, the interest that is paid on that that's interest received and minus the firm itself. The interest has to pay on loans that it has obtained. All right, to enable production. So that's interest paid. So when you take the difference. That gives you the net interest. Government also pay interest, but government interest is not included in national income because it's basically on um, it's it's basically on debt. You know, there's interest on bonds that um, that are issued out by the government. So it's 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 nothing new is being produced. All right, somebody's lending government money. Government didn't produce anything. Okay, and then has to pay this interest. The same thing with households. So there are sometimes that is also don't just save in the real world. So there are times that individuals in the household you know, take some loans, maybe mortgage loan, whatever, whatever like that, and they also have to pay interest on those loans. So we don't include that in the GDP. What we include is the net interest paid, net interest by firms. Okay, because that's of course involves new production, production of um, new goods and services. Now, proprietor's income is just talking about the income of unincorporated businesses. It's simply so proprietor's income. Yeah. Okay. Then you have factor income from abroad, which is talking about um, the income of the citizens of a country outside the country minus the payments made to other citizens, the payment made to citizens of other countries inside a country. Now, if I'm to make this clearer, factor income from abroad is let's use Nigeria and the US. Okay, if there is an individual in the US, okay, that is a Nigerian working in the US, and whatever income the person earns is income received from abroad from Nigeria and then if there is a US citizen in Nigeria that is working let's say show all right whatever income that the US citizen receives is um income paid you know to foreigners so when you take the difference which is the one received by the Nigerian abroad minus uh, the one paid to the US citizen in Nigeria you then have the factor income from abroad or um called next factor payment sometimes next factor payment Okay, and it's not just talking about labor, for example. Now, so it could be in terms of capital too. Okay, so if there's a is it, there's a Nigerian that owns capital abroad, and then there is a foreigner that owns capital in Nigeria. So the payments on all of these things, you take the net and all of that. There is at least a video on this item that discusses them a little bit deeper than I have discussed them. But because that is not our primary stuff uh, for today, so I've just given a quick revision on um, each of the items. Okay, now the um. Economy, total economy is divided into four components. Okay, you have the households, you have the firms, you have um, the government, and then you have, um, for, um, let me call them uh, the rest of the world now, the rest of the world. Now, the sum of households, household, is, uh, household and firms gives you the private sector, uh, the government gives you the government sector, and the, the public sector rather, and then the rest of the world gives us um, the foreign sector. Okay, now. Calculating GDP via explanatory approach is the easiest. Okay, whenever you have a question like this, the problem usually is that students don't really understand how to calculate GDP via income approach. Okay, but whenever you have a question like this, the answer that you get for explanatory approach is likely the right answer, even though whatever you might be solving or whatever you might be trying to arrive at for the income approach is not um, may not be um, that clear or the answer may not be similar to what you have. Yeah, now for expenditure approach, GDP is simply, uh, GDP is simply uh, consumption, which is talking about the uh, private uh, consumption, okay, consumption by everybody in the um, economy. Now, what you need to understand about consumption is that consumption isn't talking about just the consumption of domestically produced goods and services. I think I was mentioning private domestic consumption the other time. Uh, okay, it's talking about, you know, in, in consumption now, for example, uh, the shirts I'm wearing, uh, may not be produced in Nigeria, but it's also a part of consumption. So consumption is kind of bigger. So consumption is talking about um, domestically produced goods and services that also that also are demanding, and foreign produced goods that also are importing as well. Okay, so that's what you have in consumption. You have investment C plus I, which is done by firms. You have um, the government, and then you have the rest of the world that is represented as NS, which is net export. Where net export is simply where I can just say where NX, so where, where NX is um, export minus import. So that's GDP via expenditure. We're talking about the uh, spending on final 
I'll currently produce final goods and services, so we have x minus m. Okay, so this is cross domestic product, so we expect everything has to be cross, cross consumption, cross investment, cross government spending, and then gross net exports. That means we are not allowing for depreciation, that's different between gross and net. So net is talking about gross minus depreciation. Okay, and net investment is net investment, for example, is what talks about um, the real amount of the capital stock that we have in an economy because we've allowed for gross investment, which is talking about the addition, okay, to the capital stock, and you've subtracted depreciation, is talking about the removal or the pay and tear of capital stock. So when you do the addition and then of new capital stock and then the reduction through pay and tear, through pay and tear uh, or depreciation, we have the actual capital stock in the economy so what gives us an idea of what capital stock that we really have in the economy is not gross investment it is net investment anyway so here from the um the um, table we have um from the items we have got we have a um, consumption to be 1.52 now one thing i must mention here which i have mentioned in earlier videos is that consumption is the biggest component of the gdp okay so if you don't know in, um, investment is the most volatile complex of the GDP. Okay, which means it changes pretty fast. It's, it's the one that changes, um, um, it's, it changes the fastest among all of these items. So that's what I mean. Now, what is investment? Now, look at it. What we have here is net investment, it is not gross investment. So that is something that you guys should really take care of, take note of. Now, to, to get our gross investment, to get our gross, in, so gross investment, and I call that GI. Okay, let me say gross investment minus depreciation may give us net investment, right? Let me just call it net since we have everybody net INT since we have NI to represent national income. So this simply means that um, gross investment is your net investment, okay, plus depreciation. Plus depreciation. Okay, so that means what we have here, this investment that we have here, is the net investment that we have here, 264 plus depreciation okay then plus what is the government spending so the government purchases is 414 414 and the net export is talking about what is export export is 300 minus 400 300 minus 400 sorry i'm managing that 300 minus 400 just know okay so by the time we add this so net, net export is basically negative because export is smaller than import Okay, which is more money is going after the country and it's coming in in terms of this and this is what actually takes care of you know, the consumption that is uh, bigger than what is domestically produced in this place and some of these um, some of the goods and services produced by uh, firms that is in, is in the investment are also exported not everything is consumed they are exported out of the country for foreign uh, consumers anyway doing the addition of this we have um, 1552 plus uh, this, so when you do that, uh, I believe you're following uh, plus um, 264 plus 70, okay, plus 414 uh, plus um, 300 minus 400, okay, boom, you got the same thing, 2200. So this is 2200 billion uh, naira, okay, because these values are in billions of naira. So this is right, no matter what we do. For the income approach now what is about the income approach here so what are we going to do you see income approach is just I have to get GDP via income approaches to sum up all the incomes that are generated by the factors of production that a country owns which includes its people basically and what those people own irrespective of whatever country that they are in so by the time we sum up that those incomes we are not actually getting the GDP now I was talking about um, a Nigerian citizen in the US, for example, what the person is earning, you know, um, we have to calculate it in Nigerian national income because the person is obviously a Nigerian citizen. But what the person is producing, is this in Nigeria? No. The person is producing stocks in the US. So which simply means that uh, gross domestic gross domestic product is talking about goods and services, uh, final goods and services that are produced in a country or nearly final goods and services that are produced in a country at a particular period of time okay so that means national income is not gdp so how then do we get gdp from national income
please like and subscribe.